Tata Guahan, our people of Guam, a round of applause for your host, Captain Piano Half a day, Guahu see Stephen Lefevre. Tata Piti Guahan, Zan Sumasagazu Giza Tokyo Pago. The 12th Festival of the Pacific Arts was held on Guam for the first time in May and June of 2016, and I was lucky enough to be an ambassador for my island as a literary arts delegate as well as for motion picture, premiering my first short film, Hadzi Gaetano Esti. It was a very pivotal experience for me and for many others, connecting with friends and family as we hosted some very humble and creative artists from all over the Pacific Ocean. I also met a lot of locals for the first time, like this individual in particular, Chris Jones, who works for the Department of Agriculture. He told me about their facility in Mingila with Guam rails and kingfishers in captivity and that their ultimate goal is to let these native birds live in the wild. That conversation we had at Chamorro Village was the reason I made this documentary, to give you some positive light in hopes that one day we can all see our birds run and fly freely once again. All of these guys right here up front, these are our our ambassadors, like you are. Come on, come on. Nice scratch, okay. There you go, feels good. Okay, see? We're comfortable now. This guy is so cool. He is, he's 11 years old. He's one of our Manamco, actually. I've been here for 19 years, 18, 19 years working. I came out specifically to work with the Coco. Um, uh -huh. And I started working working with the Seahik a few years after that. The cocoa, there used to be 60 to 70,000 cocoa birds running around Guam. They were, they would walk into your house if you left your front door open. Wow. You'd have a family of, of cocoa in your living room or your kitchen area. You'd have to flush them out. Wow. We've got about 106 at our facility right now. We breed to create birds that will have a good genetic spread mm -hmm. for our, our releases, which is hard when you only have 12 birds to begin with. Mm -hmm. The mainland, they breed their birds to preserve the genetic diversity. So we actually, we work together, but we also work separately, and we ship birds back and forth. In fact, April or March, we received three birds from the mainland, uh, from the Pittsburgh aviary. Wow, okay. We've learned a lot. We now have a small population on Rhoda. Mm. And in fact, I just got an email recently from one of the bat biologists from the CNMI, who said she saw some cocoa behind her house oh, wow. in a new area. So, oh, nice. In, exactly, in, the, in a new area. So we know that the birds can reproduce in an area with low snake densities. So okay. we don't need to remove everybody. We can mm. just remove some. And then we had a larger release in the ammunition storage area without a fence, with mm. lots of extensive snake control, mm -hmm. and when the cats got them. Oh, the cats, So huh? within eight weeks, all of our birds were gone because of cats. So the, like those are things that can be done right now, you know, for people on Guam. Oh, yeah. You can spay and neuter your cats. Yeah. You know, yeah. I mean, there's, there's things that can be done right now yeah. that, that will help our cocoa. Spay and neuter your cats yeah. is a big thing. It's a very, because we, we can control the snakes. We've been, we've proven that we can do that. Mm -hmm. And we've got two areas that we're working on right now that we'll be able, able to release on Guam. Mm -hmm. And then, whoa, you're going to go down. Oh. Okay. Come on. Come on over. But at least Coco's Island is doing and well, Coco's huh? Coco's Island is really exciting, yes. Mm. It's very exciting. And Rhoda, like I said too, the island of Luta. They, mm. um, we've got birds there that, uh, have, that have no bands on their legs. And we're they're popping up in all these oh, places. Oh, wow. So they're doing their thing. It's like a kagu. It's like a kagu. Wow. Amazing. Woo! So this is the only one that likes to come out? Or no, is it? Buenos, um, Tano will come out. Uh, Buenos, he's the one who went to uh, the mural. Oh, this is the one, the yeah, famous... Come on, Okay, okay, alright. There's, this is the behavior, this is the male that, the, they're imprinted on us, but they want to reproduce. <laughs> so, 
we find that the males that haven't reproduced, because we can't always breed everybody that we want to breed, uh -huh. because it's all based on genetics, right? Oh, yeah. So you may like each other next to each other, but you could be first cousins, and uh, so you yeah. can't do that. You can't make those chromosomes right. right. Unless we want to inbreed, because we need to increase their family line. It's really a complicated program. Um, it sounds very complicated, but you seem really passionate about making it happen, you know? Yeah, well, we can. I mean, they're a great species for recovery because they mature when they're five months old. You know, they're not like a, a crow where the, the, our, our kingfisher, our sea hick, you have to wait till they're like a year and a half, two years. Then they'll maybe have one or two clutches a year. These guys are ready to go when they're five months old and uh, they can have up to 10 clutches a year. They just recycle on a, on a regular basis. Mm. The only issue we have is the, with the aggression. So all we, territorial. No, it's it's um it's just a product of being in captivity for a long time. It's uh there if you haven't bred because you're overrepresented, so my, two years might go by before you're put with somebody, and then the males are very aggressive after that. They they, they we have to watch them closely, like months. We have to keep an eye on them. I think we lost a female already this year. Also, they're aggressive so, towards the female. The female they, like how he was grabbing my finger, right? Yeah. He was shaking me. They grab the female's neck and they, they do that. So, wow. yeah, yeah, there's a lot. I mean, they're not. There's a, yeah, they're, they're very complex personalities. You know? And I'm glad you said that too because a lot of people don't like to give personalities to animals. Um, to A lot of scientists don't. But, you know, in order to be able to breed these guys better, you have to understand each bird individually. Mm. Like the crew that works with them, this, these are like their family. You know, they, they know. Yeah, they know how they, they, they are. know who is who and who fights, who is more aggressive, who's a good mom, mm -hmm. who, you know, needs a little help. These birds are so beautiful. Aren't they? I'm so glad to hear these people, because people are like, oh, they're a brown bird. Oh, look at There's these no color. Birds. They don't have color like the fruit dove or the sea hick, you know, the fruit orange. Does, you know, fruit doves are amazing, but these are amazing in their own right. Exactly. Know? They're cool. And they're flightless. You know what's interesting? They have a little claw. Where? Right. They have a claw. It's hard to see. Claw it's it's, it's like wing? a leftover from, from the dinosaur era, you know? I oh, mean, yeah. Are, because are cause birds are from dinosaurs, yes. right? Yes. And if you watch these guys walk, they're walking dinosaurs. They're so primitive. We're lucky we don't need to teach them how to feed in the wild. Mm -hmm. You release one and like he's, they stop, they're over by the coconut tree and they, they see a skink and they go after they it. They go after the skink. Whereas, you know, with the crows, when we had releasing crows, we have to teach them how to feed again. We had to show them how to open coconut crabs, mm. the duk duk. So, it, so, like I said, these guys are a really great species for recovery. We can do it. We just have to, it's, I, uh, for us, our limiting factor is the captive breeding facility. Mm. It's it's being able to produce enough birds to to maybe do five years in a row on mm. rota mm. of a hundred birds and mm. type stuff. So, yeah. it we had fifty birds last year released. Um, I think fifty birds has has been the norm lately uh, mm. for the past couple of years. I want to see these guys run around on Guam. You know, yeah, I want to live to see that. You, well, okay, and it's let's, possible. It's possible. We've come a long way in snake control since I've been here. Who knows where we'll be in 20 years, right? Mm. So So how can we help? What can we do? Well, like I said, spay and neuter your cats. Also, don't forget, I think Best Pack was about sharing stories, right? That was a, the theme we had going before it started. Talk to your Manumco, talk to the neighbors, talk to everybody, right? What it used to be like. Yeah. And uh, just remember the bird. Oh, I have wonderful stories I hear. Manumco, had, they, they had them as pets. Oh, I used to have one that slept on my pillow at night. Oh, it's like, wow. oh, I want one too. <laughs> I want one too. So if you look at everything below the fruit dove, um, the eggie and the nightingale reed warbler and the nosa, and this is the collar kingfisher, those are all the CNMI birds and Guam's birds. And these down here are our introduced species. So this is what you see today. This is what we want to see. This is what we used to see. Actually, we still see the Chichaguac. This, a, which one? The Swiftlet right here. There's two, three caves in the south mm -hmm. that have, um, and we do snake control around the, the caves. We do want to translocate um, some cave, some birds from the south to the north. There's some caves there that they've historically been known to 
to inhabit. Mm. We have a military issue. Yeah, the military issue. Okay, so this let's... This guy's gone forever. This is our true Guang Guang. We're never going to get him back. When it's was he, la he last seen in the 80s? In the 80s, yep. I heard about this guy here. Chu Guang Guang, yeah. I work here because I'm interested and I love the animals and I feel strongly about the conservation of what we have and our ability to bring it back. Mm -hmm. And I believe that we actually can bring our birds back mm -hmm. and all it takes is working together as a group. It's yeah. We're at a part, point right now in our society, in our community, where people are actually taking an active interest and involvement in our natural resources. They're actually find, realizing that we do have more to offer than what they just see around them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so it's learning what is native, what is invasive, and what they can do to help to get our birds back out in the wild. I feel really uh, honored to, you know, be be a part of the, the cause, you know. and The cause of bringing the birds yes, back. Yes, of bringing the yeah. birds back, yes. And that's the ultimate goal. Mm. And um, I've, I've always loved nature, so I've developed a deeper passion, you know, it gets me up every day to come and take care of these birds. I'm really uh, blessed to be here. We want to make Guam a safe haven once again for the birds to to be released here. We need to keep working. Yeah, we just got to keep going at it, man. We're going to, you know, get the result that we're looking for. Just hold his wings so he doesn't flap. There you go. Look at that guy. Yeah, just don't squeeze around his neck too much, too. There you go. Yeah, he's a tiny little head with a big beak and these big eyes. And the most beautiful colored yeah, feather. Right? I know the turquoise. Oh my god. What's up, buddy? The last of the last, man. Last of the last At of least one kingfish. Yeah. So we're trying to get these guys back out, but. But we've we have a committee. Like we wanted to do releases. I think we back in 2009. I mean 2009. We were like, oh, birds are breeding well. We can probably do a release soon here. And the committee was like, no, you can't. What are you talking about? And so it's just been a struggle with us. And actually, we stopped breeding back in uh, 2011 because what's the point? No one's allowing us to do anything with them. You know, for our cocoa program, Go we breed them. and release, breed and release, breed mm -hmm. and release. You know, we, mm -hmm. we have a we have rhythm going. We've got a you know, mm -hmm. with and with the kingfishers, there was just nothing. There was just no movement. No one was allowing us to move, so we stopped breeding until we can get things going. But we're planning a release for FY six seventeen in Cocos Island. So kingfishers. Yes. Yeah, so the guys. So Vince. Yes. So the guys are actually preparing cages right now. And we're going to do some breeding with, with uh, some of our females. So, Fish and Wildlife Service used to be just in Hawaii, but they've recently put people on Guam, and they're actually people from Guam. Mm. So that's good, mm -hmm. you know, because they're fighting the same battle we are. Before, it was just Fish and Wildlife over there mm. was saying, you know, you have to listen to this committee. Yeah, but now, we're grounded. We're immersed, so we know more. Yes, what right, right. It should be what. Right. The cocoa bird isn't covered under a committee, so we've been able to just do what we think is, is right for the bird. Oh, okay. The kingfishers, we're not allowed to do anything with them. Okay. Unless we get permission from okay. this committee. Unless we all agree on the big picture. But people, people on this committee say Guam is toast. Oh. And I, actually, I have no problem saying that. So people on this committee say Guam is toast and it's worthless and... But you believe otherwise. Oh, we know otherwise. We know otherwise. We know otherwise. So there's been lots of work in other parts of the world, other islands, Mauritius, for example, where community involvement, the echo parakeet, I think there was only like like eight individuals left, and now there's a couple hundred in the wild. Mm. See? Mauritius kestrel, only three left. Now there are hundreds. And Living that's, examples. Exactly. Let so, Guam be the next. Yes, place. exactly. And we can be, so... Lord 
Duenas, a wildlife biologist with the Department of Agriculture, says the recent announcement from the International Union of the Conservation of Nature is a major milestone for the cuckoo bird. It used to be extinct in the wild and, and now is critically endangered because of our um, released populations on Cocos Island and Rhoda. Huge progress on the cocoa bird, and hopefully the sea hick will gain some traction as well. Let's keep our birds in our hearts to bring this integral part of our culture back. And don't forget to spay and neuter your cats. Also, while back on Guam for Fest Pack, I got a chance to make it to Cocos Island for the purpose of capturing the rail in their new habitat. Besides this poor injured fellow in a cage, I did see one run swiftly by when I turned a corner, but unfortunately the camera wasn't on. Chris did show me some awesome turtle nests around the shore, and he pointed me to this road that the Coco cross in the morning, which I waited for hours, but no luck. I was able to capture other awesome wildlife while there, and although Coco's Island is a safe haven for birds from snakes and cats, there is a different predator, the Halitai, that I saw a few times lurking around, and I even caught one in the act of feeding out of a bird nest. They're trying to eradicate these lizards from the island as they are a threat to our flightless coco, and I would say we should try to control them on Guam as well. Please subscribe to this channel to see the next adventure. Thank you all for watching and for doing your part in eventually bringing our birds home. Ha, ha, ha.